Welcome everybody to this, uh, the, uh, um, the fourth in the series of webinars about the FAIR data principles. R, this is the webinar on R for reusable. Here we are. I'll just briefly introduce myself. My name's Keith Russell. I work for the uh, Australian National Data Service. Uh, I'm uh, the host for today and uh, um, a thank you to my colleague Susanna Sabine, who's in the background, um, co-hosting this webinar and organising things in the background. Um, just as a general introduction, uh, the Australian National Data Service works with research organisations from around Australia to establish trusted partnerships, reliable services and um, to add value to research data and enhance the capability in the research sector. Uh, we're working together with two other NCRIS funded projects, Research Data Services, RDS and Nectar, uh, to create an aligned set of joint investments to deliver transformation in the research sector. So this webinar is part of a larger series of uh, ANS activities uh, which aim to support the Australian research community in increasing our ability to manage research data as a national asset. So this is the fourth and final uh, of the four webinars in the series about the FAIR data principles. We've had um, webinars on findable, accessible, interoperable and now we're up to the fourth one, reusable. Please note, this is, this is one that comes up every now and then, um, re, the R stands for reusable, it does not stand for re replicable or reproducible. So reusable is actually broader than those other terms and means that it can be used for more purposes than just purely to replicate or reproduce the, uh, the original research. Today uh, I have, uh, I'll, I'll give a very brief introduction uh, on the, what Force 11 says about reusable under the FAIR data principle. Now first of all, um, I'll give a just a brief introduction to what Force 11 uh, r agreed on uh, as part of the FAIR data principles under the heading of reusable. So first of all, I'd like to uh, emphasize that to actually make your data reusable, you will also need to incorporate elements under findable, accessible and interoperable. So if your data is not going to be findable or not going to be accessible, then it will ultimately not be reusable anyway. So this is you, you best to see this as on top of making your data findable, accessible, interoperable. These are extra elements that you need to think about to uh, make it reusable. Um, the way they've um, the way they've talked about it, well first of all there's this first high level heading saying that uh, the data and the metadata should have a plurality of accurate and relevant attributes. Well that's pretty general um, and they then drill down into three specific attributes that are required. Now the first of those attributes is that the data and the metadata are released with a clear and accessible data usage license. If you make your data available without any license at all, it makes it very hard for a user or a re potential reuser to actually use it because it's just it's completely unclear what, what the agreement is, if there's any copyright over the data, if there's any restrictions, things like that. So uh, that's why it's very important to have a license so it's clear what you can do with it. And if you do assign a license, please make sure you use a, a, a standard license, that's def definitely preferred, and uh, ideally in a machine readable format because that way machines can actually uh, interpret whether the data can be used by that machine to do an analysis to pull in the data and um, uh, to actually incorporate it in analyses or whether they need to skip it because it's not licensed for that purpose. Uh, Nerida will talk in much more detail about a possible framework to use uh, to assign a license to your data. The second point they make under, um, under these attributes is that the data and the metadata should be associated with information about the provenance. Now this provides clarity on the steps that were taken in collecting, selecting, analyzing the data. So all the steps that have been taken to turn it from raw data into derived data and into that final data set that is made available as uh, under FAIR uh, through using the FAIR data principles. So this is, for a potential reuser, this is extremely informa useful information because it gives you much more information about the context and the background in, uh, in which the data was created and whether the data will also be suitable for the purposes that the reuser wants to use it for. Attaching provenance information is easier said than done and I'm really grateful that Margie's going to be able to talk a little bit more about what, what's happened in practice and how GA has tackled this and how GA is incorporating provenance information. Now the third and final point they make about these relevant attributes is that uh, the data and the metadata should meet domain relevant community standards. Undefinable they talked about in more in general about having 
find a metadata that allows the data to be findable and under interoperable they talked a little bit about the data and using standards. Uh, the point they're making here is that um, uh, it's very useful to make sure that the data and the metadata is in a, or the data is in a data format and a file format that is commonly used in the discipline. So that means another researcher in that same discipline can easily pick it up and use it. And uh, if you use a metadata format, think about using one that is common in the discipline too, so that it contains specific fields that are relevant to that discipline, so that a researcher in that discipline can easily understand more of the detail, what uh, what columns are in that uh, data set, what the uh, context is around the date in which the data was collected, etc. So that makes it much more useful for uh, um, a potential reuser from that community to pick up the data and reuse it. <laughs> 